Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, October 30th. I'm Ben Berkeley here with Sarah Friedman, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to be talking about an item that's generated $2.4 billion in U.S. sales so far this year. It's changing the way convenience stores and fast food chains approach their business. And, oh yeah, it's something you can make yourself in your own kitchen in mere minutes. That'd be the simple breakfast sandwich. It's one of the top stories of the year in the food business. We'll tell you the details in just a bit. But first, let's catch up on everything else making headlines in the world of business and tech today. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon will sell 1 million company shares next year, fueling speculation about his future with the bank that he has led since 2005. Those shares, by the way, are worth about $140 million today. So that's pretty good. But also he owns millions more. So whether or not he retires, dude's rich. Good for him. Farmageddon is here. Today through Wednesday, thousands of pharmacy workers across major U.S. chains like Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid are expected to call off work en masse, seeking improved working conditions. This dovetails nicely with our next one, which is on the United Auto Workers strike. They're going to be turning up the heat on General Motors, expanding its strike against that automaker. Uh, this is coming after a very strong last couple of days where UAW has struck tentative deals with Stellantis and Ford, the other two major automakers in this massive auto strike. Both of those deals, which need to be approved by members, include 25% wage increases over the next four plus years. Speaking of GM, its autonomous vehicle subsidiary Cruise is pausing robo-taxi services across the U.S., at least for now. The announcement comes two days after California suspended the company's permit, claiming the vehicles aren't safe for public operation. Who would have guessed that releasing a movie featuring murderous animatronics right before Halloween would pan out? Well, Universal had a pretty good guess, and it really worked for them. They set high marks for the horror genre this year with its video game adaptation Five Nights at Freddy's, which beat expectations with a $130 million global opening. One interesting note on this, they did concurrently release this film on their streaming service Peacock, where it also was setting records. But the fact that they released it on both at the same time and not didn't see the box office hit, that is going to be uh, big, big Hollywood news. Speaking of Hollywood, let's say you like money and you want to have it. Maybe consider living anywhere but Southern California. A U.S. News and World Report list ranked San Diego and Los Angeles as America's most expensive cities. They took the one and two spots respectively. Santa Barbara rounded out the top five. So three of the top five, Southern California, and as someone who lives in Southern California, I mean, yep, (laughs) definitely checks out. Not happy news for us, but if you don't live in those places or the other top five cities, which were Miami and Honolulu, good on you. Okay, let's move on to our main story today. We're looking into the business of the breakfast sandwich. And much like breakfast sandwiches themselves, that business is delicious. Ordinarily, I'd I'd feel a little guilty throwing a food story at you so early in the morning. You know, might get you feeling a little hungry. But that's not really the case today because I'm going to play the odds and assume that you may have already had a breakfast sandwich today. The numbers are just that staggering. Sarah, what can you tell us about the rise of the humble breakfast sandwich? Yes. So... You actually recently wrote about cereals fall from grace, which means that there is room at the table for a new king of breakfast, and that is the breakfast sandwich. Data has showed that breakfast sandwiches were the fastest growing item at convenience stores this year, and sales are up 
Americans bought more than 2.4 billion of them uh, as of September, and that's up from 1.5 billion in 2019. So people are crazy for breakfast sandwiches. And even at fast food restaurants, breakfast sandwiches are beating out favorites like chicken nuggets and burgers, which we would normally think of as being kind of the bread and butter, um, no pun intended, of fast food. And breakfast sandwiches are actually reigning supreme. They are having their moment. Um, Happy for them. And of course, happy for us. I'm curious, like this has been also just like the wider story across fast food where, you know, there's been this rise and every place has a breakfast menu suddenly and they seem to be growing segments and doing well. What's What's going on here? Yeah, so it turns out that even when consumers cut back on dining out in general, breakfast seems to hold steady. So brands are really racing to come up with a lot of different options and variations with their menu to kind of get in on the breakfast rush. So McDonald's partnered with Krispy Kreme to expand its menus. Dunkin' recently launched new breakfast tacos. Wendy's added to new English muffin sandwiches and had already revamped its breakfast menu options. And then even in grocery stores, brands like Jimmy Dean have expanded their lineup. So Jimmy Dean added plant-based options, for example, to kind of get in on the younger crowd of customers looking for plant-based, meat-free options. So all the brands are kind of racing to compete here and many are doing so by just adding as many <laughs> menu items as as humanly possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is this is also let's go on, going back into breakfast sandwiches here for a second. Like the one thing that confuses me, and obviously there are certain scenarios where you definitely need to be on the you know you're traveling or whatever it may be, but like on a regular day, like I suck in the kitchen and slow. I'm impatient, and yet I can make myself a pretty pretty great breakfast sandwich in a matter of minutes. And like, you know, there are very few groceries required, very few skills, obviously required if I'm able to do it. So why are people continuing to pay this premium for sandwiches outside of their home? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that it really comes down to portability and just kind of ease. Everyone's really busy. And McDonald's, when they first introduced the Egg McMuffin in 1971, it was the lore says out of necessity as Americans were starting to work longer hours and needed their breakfast on the go. But I think the same holds true now. We looked at the numbers and 80% of fast food orders are taken from the car and less than 10% of McDonald's visits are dine-in. So I think all of this is just people are busy and as simple as it is to make eggs and bacon at home, those moments are precious. Like your alarm goes off and it's you know, you're racing out the door. So I think having it on the go, being able to get it through a drive through and then physically being able to eat it while you drive, it's a little grim, but I think that that's honestly responsible for a lot of the popularity here. I mean, it, it, I guess that, that makes sense. And obviously I am in the minority making them myself if we're talking about what $2.4 billion worth of sales just in the first nine months of this year, which is... Wow. I guess let's turn a corner here because we can't talk about breakfast sandwiches without also getting to the, the fun side of it, which is determining what is, what makes a good breakfast sandwich. So I'm going to lightning round uh, you here, Sarah. Your ideal base for a breakfast sandwich is bagel, croissant, or English muffin? Croissant, 100%. Ooh. Yes. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Great choice. I mean, more butter per square inch so <laughs> this is true this is true i don't know why i'm going english, english muffin was my gut and i okay I, no a classic thank you I, ne- I needed i needed your your support on that one it feels like the like the i don't know lesser option of the three all right let's go with another one the key ingredient in a breakfast sandwich for you is i mean it has to be the egg right like you without the egg it's just a sandwich <laughs> This is, that's all too true. It is as a sandwich. I I feel like the egg only goes so far as the cheese will take it. Yeah, it's, it's the glue. That's, that's where I, yeah, that's where I'm coming in because I feel like 
the difference between every good and bad breakfast sandwich I've had is, is the cheese any good? Interesting. See, but, I'm okay but, with a slice of packaged American. Oh, I mean, sure. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything about that. I'm, I'm, I'm in with that. And to your point, yes, the egg is what makes it a breakfast sandwich. And then let's go with best breakfast sandwich you've ever had. Honestly, just at the corner bodega in New York City, like around the corner from my old office. Nothing compares with like the crinkly metallic wrapping and like a packet of ketchup. You know, it just nothing will ever hit the same. I actually would go with the same. I'm sure not this like statistically not the same place, but like similar, like especially when you're working in New York as a young person and you're like making negative money yes. or so it feels and it's like oh here is the three dollar breakfast sandwich to sustain you for your day it's like i don't even know if it was good but boy does it it it, it still it still hits when i think about it exactly all right well that's gonna do it for us today thank you everyone for tuning into the hustle daily show we're a proud part of the hubspot podcast network our editor today is Ed Trupiano, and our executive producer is darren clark We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. We'll see you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.